What's going on, Tiger fans? So I wanted to pump this video out, kind of a late video tonight. Uh, the Tigers game is still going on, but I want to get this done. So tomorrow is the expansion of roster, September call-up, yearly thing. And instead of like years past, where you, I think you could bring up like 12 guys, over the last couple of years, they've made it to where you can only bring up two. It used to be really funny when they had the old September call-ups, because I can remember, look, they would show Doug out, uh, a clips of like all the players come up and you'd have like 10 guys and teams complain because teams would call up just a bunch of young relievers so the game times would just get super long because guys would be out there this was before the three batter minimum rule guys would be out there bringing in just a bunch of different relievers for left right left right left right because they had like 14 bullpen arms and it's not an exaggeration so they're like no we gotta you gotta nix that now you only get two so, as I alluded to in my last video on Sunday, that I said, bring it to the bank, cash check, Spencer Torkelson's going to be back up in the big leagues come September 1st. Well, today the Tigers announced their September call-ups, and there's actually three moves that's going on. One that doesn't affect the, the September call-ups, Michael Pineda is getting activated off the IL, and he is expected to start Saturday against Kansas City. There's going to be a move for that. I'd imagine Zach Short probably gets sent back down to the minor leagues because they don't have any room for him, and I think he's got one hit uh, all year, and there's no no room for him whatsoever. So the other two moves, Torkelson's coming up, just like I said he would, and Ryan Kreidler, and I think I alluded to this a couple of times in my last video, or I've, I've been talking about this the last couple of times. I know I've made mention somewhat of it, that Ryan Kreidler was going to get a look sometime this year. I know I've said that, but I wasn't sure, 100% positive, if he was going to be uh, a September call -up. For the fact being that the Tigers, they have, they've gone through so many starting pitchers. Joey Wentz has pitched very well since coming back from injury uh, that he had had. It took him a long time to get back even to AAA after he had that injury. Uh, I want to say it was back in June when he made his career second start at Comerica Park and he was pitching really well, but they had to come out after, I think, the fourth inning. So I was like, well, maybe he might get a look at it. Well, you also got to keep in mind that Ryan Kreidler would have been eligible for the Rule 5 draft if it wasn't for, if the Tigers did not put him on the 40-man roster. And the Tigers didn't want to lose him. So he had to either be put on the 40-man or given a look uh, in the big leagues, which would be putting him on the 40-man, or he'd be eligible for the Rule 5 draft and another team could take him. So let's go and... Let's talk a little bit about Ryan Kreidler. So you guys have heard me talk about Ryan Kreidler quite a bit on this channel uh, last year. So Kreidler really came to have any kind of notoriety in the organization last year. So last year, he was in double A. And when he was in double A, he was with Riley Green and he was with Spencer Torkelson. And those three, I think even Dylan Dingler was a part of that group. Basically, it was those, those four, I want to say, were absolutely killing it in the minor leagues. So... Dingler, Kreidler, Green, and Torkelson uh, were were double A Erie, which I'm wearing my Torkelson shirt for Erie. Were absolutely all destroying the ball. Dingler ended up getting hurt, and he ended up tailing off. And he's still been in in double A because he hasn't been he's been okay since he got hurt, but he has never really been able to make the next step. Nonetheless, Kreidler, Torkelson, and Green all got called up to Triple A at the same time. And I didn't really know too much about Ryan Kreidler when he got called up to AAA because I was more so excited, as everyone else was, to see you know Spencer Torkelson and Riley Green so close to Detroit. So my brother and I, we made the, the trip up, and our, our friend Steven, we made the trip up uh, to Toledo. They had come down to my house, we went up and watched those guys play. And Ryan Kreidler, if you look at his statistics last year between Green, Torkelson, and him, Ryan Kreidler was the best of all of them at AAA. He was really good. And if you guys listen to the Road Detroit podcast, which I always plug all the time on this channel, it's a fantastic podcast. Dan Hasty does a, a really good job. You learn so much about the minor leagues, and you stay very consistent with knowing your prospects and what they're doing. So Dan Hasty had talked about him, and Dan Hasty had saw him at West Michigan. And a lot of people, oh, and he did an interview with someone who uh, was a coach at AA. And everyone kept saying the same thing about Ryan Kreidler, the glove plays. Someone has even said that, uh, I think Dan Hasty said that he was the best shortstop he has ever seen played defensively at West Michigan. And the same testament was echoed from that person that they interviewed from AA Erie. The thing was about Kreidler is they were never sure about the power stroke and never sure about the hit tool. They knew the glove was was a good thing. They knew that his, his range was fantastic. His arm was good. 
they always knew that his defense was a plus, but they were never quite sure about the hit tool if it was ever going to come to fruition. So last year in 20, uh, 2021, Kreidler hit in total between both levels. He hit 270 with a 349 on base, a 454 slugging percentage, and had 22 home runs and 58 RBIs. Now, a lot of people thought that with that year last year, him uh, going to AAA, posting really good numbers, his defensive abilities, that he was a Sherlock to get a look next year. Because remember last year, the Tigers had absolutely no shortstop, and they went through a myriad of shortstops, and they couldn't find one. Well, obviously, some guy who wears number 28 on our team and had signed a six-year contract kind of threw a monkey wrench into all that, uh, which is Javier Baez. Well, Kreidler came out in spring. He had a similar-ish opportunity like Torkelson and Green, but there was never any really definitive uh, notion that he was going to have an opportunity to compete for a starting roster spot uh, on opening day like Torkelson and Green did, mainly because Jonathan Scope was coming off a career year and they signed Javier Baez and still got Jimmy Candelario. And a lot of people knew that Torkelson was going to break the team with camp. So Kreidler had a decent enough spring. He actually hit a grand slam. I remember listening to the game, hit a grand slam in spring. And he was looking good. So then he goes down to Toledo, and he was ripping the cover off the ball the first couple of weeks. Well, right around the time Riley Green started rehabbing, uh, Kreidler got hit in the wrist with a pitch and broke his wrist. Well, right around the time that Riley Green started rehabbing, um, it was only like three weeks after Kreidler had wrist surgery, he came back and he started his rehab assignment uh, in AAA. Well, he came back a little too fast, and he ended up getting hurt again. And I think that Kreidler was in uh, Lakeland for a little while, uh, trying to get back to even get back to Toledo, trying to get back to AAA. And Kreidler's numbers this year have taken a big hit. And I don't think it's an issue of talent-wise. I don't think it's an issue of he can't. I think it was an issue of he came out hot. He showed he could hit last year. He was showing that same hit tool again this year. And if if he didn't get hurt, I think that Kreidler would have probably gotten an opportunity by midsummer sometime to come up over where, when Cody Clemens got called up. If he didn't get hurt, that probably would have been the time that Ryan Kreidler would have debuted with the Tigers. But he was doing a rehab assignment. He was still so far away from the big leagues. And when he eventually didn't make his way back to Toledo, He's been having a little bit of a hard time hitting. So far for the year, in 22, he uh, has a 219 average, 363 on base, a 419 slug. He's got eight home runs and 26 RBIs. Now, he has been hitting better this past month, and they have been worried about his strikeout rate. They almost called him up a, uh, when Scope went on the IL, but they called up Zach Short because of that reason, because of the strikeout rate. But... We're going to get an opportunity to see what Kreidler's got. Kreidler was a, a former fourth-round pick in the 2019 draft. Uh, he's 24 years old, so he's kind of getting on that precipice. You know, if he was, if the Tigers would have just 40-manned him and left him down the rest of the year, next year he's going to be 25. He's still never seen what he could do at the big league level. So four weeks is a hard time to prove yourself because you're a guy that, you know, has been hurt. You're still kind of coming back from injury. You know, he's only been in Toledo five weeks or six weeks since he came back up from single A. And now you're coming up to the big leagues to face pitching for the best pitching you're ever going to you're ever gonna see for the first time ever. And, I mean, us seeing as many guys debut this year, you know, it can go one of two ways. I mean, Cody Clemens wore an 0 for 17 before he got his first hit. I think Kerry Carpenter was 0 for 9 before he got his first hit. Torkelson was 0 for 10 before he got his first hit. And right now, it's he's going to play a lot of second base. He'll probably play some third. And they'll when they give Javier Baez a blow, they'll put him at shortstop. So I think there's going to be plenty of opportunity for him to be around the infield and get and get some ABs and get some chances. Because this guy has pop, and his defensive abilities are off the chart. You don't go through three different levels have three different sets of eyes on you, and every single person says the same thing about your defensive abilities and not have some kind, some, some, your, that ring true. We are going to see a guy who can, who can pick it. We're going to see a guy that's got some range. We're going to see a guy that's got some good, a really good arm. And I'm excited to see that. I don't expect really a lot from Kreidler with the bat for the last month. Not because I don't think he can hit, because I know he can hit. He's proved it in the minor leagues. This year, like I said, is an anomaly. 
but he's got four weeks to do anything. He's got maybe 60 plate appearances coming until the end of the season. It's going to be really hard to see what you got there in 60 plate appearances. You can't you can't judge that. I mean, Riley Green went through a stretch in 124 plate appearances where he hit like 220. Now, his last 50 plate appearances, he's hitting like 380. So, it's really hard to see. I mean, he can come out and hit 400 for the last four I have four weeks of the season. I remember when Jamer Candelario first got called up by the Tigers. Uh, when he got traded over from the Cubs, I was actually, I think, at his second or third game he ever played for the Tigers. And Candelario destroyed the ball the last month of the season. And then he had two years of being inconsistent. You know? So you don't know. It's, it's hard to judge. It's hard to tell. But the fact that he's going to get an opportunity, the fact that the Tigers are bringing him up and giving him a chance, that's, it's fantastic. And I'm excited to see it. Um, there was other guys that I thought potentially had a chance to maybe be a September call. Wilmer Flores has had a hell of a year. Uh, and I, th I think he's done an awesome job, but he never got to triple a, but there is guys that make the leap from double a to right to the big leagues. And as, and as a guy, you know, that has, has done really good work in double a, he could have been a guy or Joey Wentz could have been a guy, you know, there's still a lot of other guys down there that have played very well this year that could have had a chance, but I think with Kreidler being eligible for the Rule 5 draft, if the Tigers didn't 40-man him, and the fact that they want to see what they got, this guy's going to be, he's 24, he's going to be 25 next year, he's never been in the big leagues, and they want to at least give him an opportunity, give him 40, 50, 60 plate appearances, there's nothing wrong with that. So now let's move on to Spencer Torkelson to wrap this video up. We all know what happened, we all know what Tork was when he had his first opportunity in the big leagues this year, let's be honest, Torkelson, he hit pretty well in spring. He got his opportunity, but there were signs in May that there was chinks in the armor. There were signs that maybe he should have been sent down. Now I knew the arguments for sending him down and I knew the arguments for keeping him up. A lot of people have were like, well, you know, and I was one of them. He had already been up at the big leagues this long. You might as well let him struggle through it. You might as well see if he can make the, the adjustment here at the biggest level because, you know, this is where he's got to hit. This is where he's going to play. And it never came. Torkelson was hit, couldn't hit pitches right down the middle. Torkelson constantly, constantly following pitches uh, off and, and for pop-ups behind the plate, pop-ups at first base, foul outs all the time, just pop-ups in the infield. He was constantly late on balls he could not consistently uh he could not consistently square up fastballs he was so passive on breaking balls on the outer third of the plate he was so passive he got a little bit more aggressive toward the end there but he was so passive early in the counts there were so many times where pitchers would throw balls right down the middle early in the count because they knew they could steal strikes against Torkelson he would take a pitch right down the middle and then he would they would throw breaking balls away and he would take the pitch and then they would try to get him to chase fastballs up or go a little bit further outside uh, on the zone to set him up. And they would either beat him on fastballs up and then they would extend the zone a little bit more and breaking balls away and, and he would chase or they would he would never swing at that slider on the outer third. And it was a big issue. And there was just so many times you would see pitches, back up sliders, middle of the plate, fouled off, straight back. Fastballs in the middle of the plate, swing through, fouled off, straight back. Fastballs up middle of the plate, pop up in the infield. He was constantly dipping his shoulder. He was constantly out, uh, constantly late. He could never time up pitches. His swing mechanics were just all off. I mean, you got to think if you're fouling balls off, you're you're behind it in your mechanics. You're just your whole lower half is not in sync with your hands. You're just not on time. So they sent him down right at the All Star break. I knew then that Torkelson. I thought that it was a little bit late. I would have rather had them send him down in the late end of May, early June, give him a more opportunity down there than the time they did. Because I knew that Torkelson had no sh chance of coming back up anytime soon. Uh, uh, AJ Hinch told him it could be a week, told him it could be two weeks, it could be a month. Well, it turned out to be, I think, almost seven weeks he was down there. Six and some change, we'll call it. Because the All-Star break, I want to say, was the 15th or the 16th. And tomorrow was September 1st. So, yeah, about almost seven weeks he was down there. So, 
in that time span, he first came down, he struggled mightily. And, and I've been giving you guys updates the whole way along through about Torkelson's progress. Now, there's been a lot of misleading articles written about Spencer Torkelson's progress down at AAA, and I've been getting really fucking pissed off because there's so many clickbait articles, especially in the Detroit News and The Athletic, where they try to sit here because they're clickbait view-based sites, and they want you to think that certain things are not actually going on because they're trying to create, in a season where the Tigers are as bad as they are, they're trying to create anger, and they're trying to create... Uh, vitriol and trying to get people angry because of how they're already angry that the season is what it is and Torkelson's a big rookie and he's a first round pick, 1-1 one, one guy he should have been playing better than what he did so they're writing articles about like his progress isn't as good as it is and he's been struggling, blah 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 okay, well here is what the, here's the deal Torkelson in, in August I told you guys in my last video, Torkelson at one point in time was hitting almost under 170. His OPS was under 640. He has since brought his numbers up to where he is now hitting in his time in AAA, uh, uh, 253, 387, 440 with an 827 OPS. He has brought his numbers up tremendously, tremendously. He did that. This is his... Numbers in the month of August, 253, 387, 440, 827 OPS. His average, I think, is, is almost under 250, but that doesn't matter. That does not matter whatsoever. He has four home runs in the last month. He has five doubles. He has walked 19 times to 28 strikeouts. He is now walking again. That is not a bad ratio for someone as young as him, for someone who was struggling. That means he's seeing the ball well. That means he's getting on base almost 4 out of 10 times. At 440 slugging percentage, is not bad at all. In 827 OPS, J-Rod, who, uh, Julio Rodriguez, who the Tigers are playing the Mariners right now, J-Rod has like an eight, uh, uh, 760 OPS, and everyone's losing their mind about him because he's a damn good player, and he's doing it at the major league level while Torkelson is in Toledo. But my point is, those are extremely respectable numbers. But when you get guys like Evan Petzold and uh, Cody, Corey Stavenhagen and all the other clowns from the Detroit News that are trying to push their clickbait, misleading ass fucking articles, trying to tell you Tiger fans to get you guys riled up at the organization, to try to get you guys more pissed off at the fact that Spencer Torkelson was even set down in the first place because he didn't do what he was supposed to do his first time up. And mind you, he's only 23. Mind you, he only had one year in the minor leagues. He has been better. I've been trying, and this is why the few people that do watch my videos, I've been trying to give you guys updates because it's not all, you know, doomsday and, and this kid sucks and this kid's a bust. He has been making progress. He has been getting better. His swings have been getting better. If you go and you look at his nightly box scores, every single morning, the first thing I do when I wake up is I would look at the MILB app to check the box score. I would go on Twitter and type in Spencer Torkels and look up every single highlight. When I could, I would watch the games to try to watch at bat at bat basis stuff versus Spencer Torkelson. And you could see it, especially like starting the second week of August. The swings are getting better. He changed his swing a little bit. He's now, I would say he is not as like up. Like he's still up, but he's like is is the way his front foot is. He changed the way his, his front foot is, the way he loads up. His front foot gets down a lot faster. The hands are coming straight through the zone super quick. The front shoulder isn't pulling off, and he is ripping the ball. When he hit that ball to right center for a home run the other day, and he ripped it like a left-handed hitter, I knew. I knew. He almost hit a grand slam the other day, dead center field. The ball just missed going out by a foot. He got freaking robbed. He had a ball against the Iowa Cubs, went 437 feet. I don't even know why the left fielder even, I would have put my glove down and tied my, retied my laces because he had no chance. The swings have been getting better. The consistency is getting better. The big thing was when he started hitting, getting a little bit more extra base power. Well, he isn't walking. 19 walks to 28 strikeouts. That's not bad at all. So stop listening to some of these clickbait, bullshit-ass, misleading articles. Now we're going to get to see Torkelson and see what he could do in the last four weeks of the season. We're going to see if the, the mechanical moves he made, the swing changes that he's made, does this translate to the big leagues? Does this start to help unlock the potential that Spencer Torkelson has that he's yet to been able to show on a consistent basis because we've seen it in spurts, but I shouldn't be able to name 
all the times that we've seen it. Like the ball in Pittsburgh he hit that he almost hit out to center field. The ball that he hit in Kansas City for his second Major League home run. The ball that he hit in Miguel Cabrera's 3,000th hit game for a home run. That was a really good swing. The pinch hit single with, that he had a go-ahead RBI in the eighth inning against the White Sox was a really great hit that he absolutely ripped the ball. Riley Green's opening day, uh, opening first game where he hit a double off the, the wall against in the opposing team's bullpen. That's my point. I shouldn't be able to know all these really good hits that Spencer Torkelson had because there should be so many of them that they blend together. It's an expectance because the consistency is there. I'm seeing it all the time. Now, you're not going to succeed every single time. You're going to get out. If you have a 10-year a, a major league career and you have 5,000 plate appearances, if you're lucky, 3,000 of them are going to be an outs, and you're going to have a hit 2,000 of those times. You fail so much. But you need to see the consistency there, even when he's not getting hits. How are the swings looking? Is he fouling every pitch off that's going to be a foul out every single time? Is he striking out all the time because he's late constantly on, on fastballs and he can't make the adjustment to hit breaking balls? You know, is he making hard contact? Is he just having bad luck? This is the kind of things that we need to see even during failure times. The at-bat to at-bat consistency needs to be there. And hopefully over the next four weeks, we see Spencer Torkelson with these swing changes and mechanical changes that we see more consistent, better swings more often. Because the kid can play a hell of a first base. The kid's got just so much power. But remember, guys, he's 23. Guys aren't good right away. It takes time. This is not an easy game. You fail so much. So stop rating this kid off as a bust. Stop believing on the clickbait bullshit. Torkelson has been better in AAA. Go watch some of his highlights. Go pay attention. Go look at the statistics. He has been better. The swings have been better. The power has been coming back. He's been walking again. So we'll see. Anyways. Riley and Kreidler, Spencer Torkelson, both coming up to Detroit. They don't expect either one of them to start until Friday where Kreidler's going to make his major league debut. But they will both be there tomorrow, back in Detroit. So I'm really excited. And uh, we'll see how they look over the last uh, couple weeks of the season when getting some plate appearances. So I'll be back Sunday, and we can talk about their first couple plate appearances back in the big leagues after getting called up. That's all I got for you guys today. Go Tigers.